everyone. It's uh, almost lunch time, so I promise I will not take longer. And uh, I will try to stimulate your appetite for, for the break. Uh, I would like to thank the organizer of this session. When I spotted the title and the abstract on my the enormous uh, EAA program, immediately I, you know, very enthusiastically uh, had the idea to, to participate, to propose, and I thank them to have accepted my, my intervention. Uh, not just because I am a specialist in rock cut architecture, uh, but living and working in Sicily clearly makes this something very common, uh, something that uh, uh, the, the perception of the persistence of rock cut architecture in the landscape is very, very common. I'm a prehistoric archaeologist, and therefore I have to do with also with rock art architecture. But um, with this presentation, I don't want to concentrate on just a single site or a single phase, but I will try to give a kind of a historical uh, uh, picture of what is rock art architecture in central Sicily. I will focus mainly on central Sicily the area where I'm living and working. Uh, and also, uh, I would like to uh, discuss the impact of rock art, rock cut architecture on the landscape, both in the past, for the communities of the past, how they use and what they were using rock cut architecture, and for the community of the present. I will try if we have the time to conclude uh, with some remarks on uh, present-day use of rock art architecture. Um, as I said, rock art architecture has provided the key contribution to the shaping of the Sicilian landscape uh, since the prehistory and through the centuries up to very recently. The Isla communities developed very early the techniques necessary to cut and shape the widely diffuse limestone, sandstone, in my area, the array, also the uh, uh, flesh uh, formation. This is um, going to rely cemeteries, cult places, military outposts, habitation, productive facilities. Here, and I choose between the many opportunities that the Sicilian archaeology has, uh, provides uh, two famous examples. One is Fantalica. It's a necropoly close to Syracuse with almost 5,000 graves, cuts uh, in this large uh, mountain. Uh, clearly, they are not all in use at the same time. The chronology goes from the late Bronze Age, 12th century, up to the Greek period, so the 7th, 6th century BC. While this one is the Contrada Arteria, this is a catacomb, and it's been uh, it's near Ragu Ragusa, again near, near southeastern Sicily, uh, dating from the 4th, 5th century AD up to the Byzantine period, so yes, 8th, 9th century AD. Um, but it is very important also for present day. This is uh, the village of Sperlinga, it's just one of the main examples, the northern part of our, my area. Uh, Houses built inside the rock uh, have been uh, excavated since uh, almost 40 years ago. People were still living there, even now. Uh, people are living there, uh, even if now only the more poor part of the population living in uh, the rock cuts, uh, while other rock cuts have been used as, as, as for animals, for others. Uses. Uh, the persistence in the present day landscape of ancient rock cut architecture plays a crucial role in the understanding of the social and cultural dynamics of human occupation in the various parts of the island, even for those parts that don't have uh, clear archaeological evidence. The presence of rock cut architecture gives an idea of ancient uh, occupation of the area. At the same time, however, this uh, same persistence poses a series of interpretative limits the definition of the chronology and the function of the rock cut structures. The techniques and the tools used to cut the rock are very conservative, remaining almost immutable through the centuries. Rock cut structures have often changed their functions, 
with the overlapping of different uses in the same place. And the continuity of occupation of the same structures, even with different roles, has provoked the disturbance and the disappearance of the oldest and stratigraphic context. Uh, we can start to talk about rock cut structures in uh, Sicily during the prehistory. The oldest evidence are dating to the early Copper Age, around the fourth millennium BC. Uh, what we have Uh, uh, what we call the shaft burials. So we have a vertical shaft excavated in the bedrock and then excavated the, 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 the funerary chamber just on the side uh, with the deposition of one or two bodies and the part of the grave goods. Okay, there is an evolution. We move from vertical shaft to frontal entrance. This is early Bronze Age, uh, end of third, beginning of second millennium BC. Uh, this is the necropolis of Castelluccio, which is given the name to the entire period. Uh, we have a single um, uh, a grave with a single cell, but often they have also kind of monumental uh, front decorated with uh, uh, pillars, uh, columns, uh, and this is a recent 3D reconstruction of what could be the appearance of uh, early Bronze Age uh, uh, burial. With the entrance closing the slab, uh, the position just in front of it, whatever. Um, coming to the area where I'm working, the LA Upland is a, a very wide hilly area placed in the eastern, uh, eastern part of central Sicily, in the red box. As a different landscape uh, situation, uh, a series of rivers are crossing the entire area in the west-east direction toward the Ionian Sea. Uh, the area is delimited on the west by the Igmera Meridionale, which is the longest river in the area. In terms of geology, as I said, uh, the area is, is characterized by the presence of limestone and sandstone mainly, and during, in the northern part, the neighborhood. the southern part of the neighboring chain, we have the flish, which is kind of uh, uh, sand uh, which has been compressed on the seabed uh, uh, and then emerged when the mountains of the uh, northern part of Sicily emerged. Uh, we, as I said, we have a long history uh, with different meanings and different uses of rock art architecture. Here you see a kind of a very schematic uh, framework, uh, different from the rest of the island in the early Copper Age, in the central part we don't have any evidence of rock cut architecture. We start with the late Copper Age, with the funerary mean uh, use, which go up down to the Roman and Byzantine period. Uh, from the Greek, rock cut architecture started also to be used in order to create cult places. Uh, so things start to change in the medieval period when, uh, uh, as we will see soon, uh, rock cut structures have been used to, in order to defense or castles, uh, which will be rock cut, uh, created inside the, um, the, 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 the cliffs. Uh, but only very recently, as I said, in the last uh, four or five hundred years, uh, Rock cut architecture has been used for our habitation. Uh, we start with late Copper Age. We have this uh, series of necropolis, very small, very close to the sites, to the villages, uh, with multiple, multiple chambers. Uh, uh, there is a number, uh, number of, uh, of, of, uh, of graves. Uh, then we move to the early Bronze Age, where, where the necropolis are always placed near the uh, village, but not anymore in a strict connection, but just above, dominating from above the, the village. Uh, the number of uh, uh, graves for each cemetery start to increase until to reach what uh, I said in the late Bronze Age, I just showed in the first, the, the Pantalica necropolis. This one is a necropolis 
in a near Enna, it's a real meze, with, more, with almost 350 graves preserved. Um, in the Greek period, uh, we have rock cut uh, graves, uh, which have uh, the typical uh, square uh, while doing the prehistory, in proto history. The, the shape of the graves, the rock cut graves, are circular. During the Greek period, it is uh, rectangular, they have benches. So the very good deposition, and often the roof of the of the, um, of the grave it was uh, double pitched. Uh, but then we start also to use uh, to have rock cut uh, cult places. Kotsumatvice and Ain myself is a, uh, a site excavated just on the uh, eastern uh, fringe of the Enna plateau, uh, and this is what. Well, we have to be in 2008, and it's possible uh, an area dedicated to the cult of Demeter, because we found a series of uh, elements indicating this as a botros uh, with uh, the position. We found a series of female statuettes inside this, and then we have this uh, uh, vertical uh, side uh, which has been covered with a series of niches, uh, which are known in other uh, Demet, uh, santuaries indicated to Demeter in Agrigento, in Syracuse, and in other areas. Uh, it's a kind of room, is a rectangular room, probably used for ritual banquets. Um, moving to, from Greek to Roman period, in the early imperial period, the Roman period, we are around the second and third century, we have a series of uh, Rombaria, uh, clearly, there's been a lot of debate, are these funerary uh, or others, uh, consider this is an uh, urban uh, cave. It's been found by Paolo, pa by Paolo Orsi back in the 30s, last century. And it's called the Grotta della Spezzeria, which means the spicy uh, cave, because uh, at the beginning they were thinking that it was something working with spices, and using this niche to put all the products. Uh, the other one is Canalotto, it is a few kilometers away from Enna, and uh, pigeons were the more exponential. But here, Luigi Bernabobrea came in the 48 when he moved to Enna for one of his uh, important excavations. He was able to excavate the lower part of this pizzeria. Yes, and he found uh, one uh, slab closing uh, the um, well the niche with the dedication in Latin. So this was a proof that this was a funerary uh, area. In Rome, these are dedicated to the Liberti, which are the, the slaves which had been freed. Uh, as a typical in Rome uh, around the second or third century AD. And this is the period in which uh, Sicily was the granary of the empire. So a lot of expansion of um, agricultural work and uh, possible the diffusion of this. I just put some examples, but in all central Sicily and southeastern Sicily, these are quite common, uh, can be connected with the expansion of uh, cultivation of the, of the area. Uh, later on, in late Roman, we are talking about 4th, 5th, 6th century uh, AD, we start to have uh, complex catacombs with uh, subdivided graves, so uh, rectangular graves excavated on the, on, the, on, the, on the floor, and with arcosoli, so uh, graves excavated on the vertical sides. During the Byzantine, we have only uh, subdivided graves, uh, but Canalotto is a rock cut village. Clearly, we have some evidence that this has been used already since probably the prehistory. Some uh, prehistoric rock cut tombs are still preserved in the area. But the maximum expansion started with the Byzantine period and continued during the Islamic period. Islamic, uh, Islamic period that is uh, been evidenced by Aldo Messina, a colleague from Trieste University, that in one site just the northern part of the area is located along one of these flesh uh, cliffs. 
uh, segment where you project the Pugeo material and you interpret the one of the one as a possible rock cut mosquito. Uh, the, move, the passage from the Byzantine to the Islamic and then after Islamic uh, to other periods is uh, well evidenced by the uh, presence of a series of castles which has been uh, realized cutting the, uh, the rock. The most famous is Perlinga and Gagliano that are structures very quite big, very complex, uh, completely uh, cut inside the uh, uh, the, the, the bedrock, the, the flesh numidic. I want just to conclude, uh, just to give an idea of what is the complexity of study uh, rock art architecture with the story of a single cave. A cave which has been found in Enna, in the, in the sanctuary we have located in 2008. Uh, this cave which is just dug aside the, 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 the side of the uh, niches uh, was, uh, first of all, a grave during the Greek period. Uh, because we have clearly the, the rectangular, the remains of the rectangular uh, entrance, typical of Greek uh, gra graves. Uh, during the Roman period, the way were inside had been excavated Soli, and the dimension was very small, so probably children. Uh, still the same use of funerary, but different uh, ritual. Uh, during the medieval period, uh, uh, it the, the was not used anymore as a, as, a, as a funerary space, but as a productive space. So we have a series of pits uh, filled with the late, middle, late medieval. Uh, 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 pottery. Uh, so the same cave has changed through the centuries, meanings, uses, and uh, uh, function. Uh, I want just to conclude saying that uh, we need clearly more attention to the technological. Uh, the, many of the papers this morning were very instructive for me. That I'm not a specialist, but I uh, give a lot of ideas that uh, can be, you know, used to, in order to start projects on uh, focusing on the study of rock cut architecture, and, uh, escaping a little bit from the typical uh, cultural material uh, approach used in Sicily. And uh, it's important that uh, the persistence of this rocky landscape uh, can is used today in order to propose uh, projects in which uh, these uh, caves, these graves, these castles are uh, becoming part of a shared identity and used by local communities to uh, uh, produce new acts of uh, construction of the uh, CCM landscape. Thank you. Thank you.